basically from the time I was in third grade that I wanted to be a doctor. One of those weird things where you can't really describe it. I just, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I was seeing it on TV. I don't have anyone in my family who was a doctor, so uh, I can't quite explain it, but uh, I knew that it was something that I wanted to do. Nothing else ever kind of piqued my interest the same way that medicine did. Get up around 5 a.m., uh, have breakfast, drink some coffee, drive into work. Usually the commute is not bad. I live in Santa Clara. It's about 20 minutes south of uh, Palo Alto. Uh, not much traffic in the morning because it's so early. This month I happen to be on OB anesthesia. Come to the Children's Hospital, Lucille Packard. Pick up my drug box in the morning, stop off at the OR, drop off my drug box, make sure that all of the drugs are ready in the cart should there be a stat C-section. Then you usually get sign out from the person who was on call the night before. How'd it go last night? Uh, it was pretty busy, yeah. Contrary to what the board looks like yeah, right now. Yeah, it looks like it's a busy, nice so. slow night. I was telling them I thought you might have uh, slept for a few hours. No, I didn't sleep at all. So <laughs> They'll let you know, uh, you know, how things went last night. Are there epidurals that are not functioning right on the floor? Is everyone doing okay? Are there any sick patients that you need to know about their medical issues? That way um, you can be aware of what's going on for the day ahead. Okay, I'll do it. The responsibility that you feel as an anesthesiologist uh, definitely is one of the things that drew me to the specialty. Hello. Hi there. I'm Dr. Hill, one of the anesthesia residents. You meet the patient in the morning having you know, maybe look through their chart the night before, but otherwise, you know, not really knowing who this person is. They come in, you know, you have to interact with them in the morning, you have to earn their trust. So what we'll do is we'll sit you up on the side of the bed, we'll get you to get in that bent over position like our little diagram up there. Really helps round out your back, open up the spaces between your vertebrae. Um, we'll numb up your back with some numbing medicine. That part can sting just a little bit, but usually only about five or ten seconds worth. You are the one who is ultimately responsible for their care. You know, you're going to put in their IV, you're going to wheel them into the operating room, you're going to put all the monitors on them, you know, you're directly pushing the medicine that puts them to sleep, you're the one that's going to keep them alive during the surgery. It's a thinking person specialty um, because of all the physiology and pharmacology that you're dealing with, um, but it's a very active, hands-on specialty. Okay. And it's never boring, and I think that definitely uh, drew me to anesthesia as opposed to other medical specialties. Uh, they have a nice little room up there in the anesthesia lounge where they have a, a pretty good spread in the morning. It's all catered, it's all provided free for the anesthesia residents and the anesthesia staff. The residents from Stanford uh, come from all over. I think anesthesia as a specialty tends to attract people that are very uh, easygoing personality types. So hang in there, about five, five minutes of setup, and then we'll get you feeling a lot more comfortable, okay? I'm a second year anesthesia resident now. You know, the first day when I got here, uh, my state of mind was kind of, man, let me just get through the first two months, because you learn so much. The learning curve is so steep in anesthesia. So what I want you to do is put our both arms here, sit up a little bit, and watch your arm. Both arms on the floor. One of the strengths if not the biggest strength of this program, is the attending, uh, the supervision, the staff uh, that looks after you on a day-to-day -day basis. I think the attendings here do a really good job of, of being there for you when you need them, um, but at the same time kind of trying to stand back as much as possible and let you, and let you run the show. The pressure in your back now. Try to hold still as possible. Let me know if you feel like you're feeling a contraction. So a really important keep nice and still. Lots of pressure. Just keep nice and still. Uh, There's a contraction yeah. coming. Okay, just breathe. Yeah. Okay, just do your breathing. Uh, Good job. Cool. So we're going to start giving you the medicine here. We we'll give you the first dose kind of slowly. And the amount of skills um, that you gain, especially in that first year, are just uh, immense. You really feel like a doctor, I think, after you've done a year uh, in the Stanford Anesthesia Program. You're, you're it. You know, you're the one that's putting them to sleep. Uh, for the surgery, you're the one that's waking them up, you're the one that's ultimately responsible, and, and you feel that on a daily basis, and, and it's a good feeling. She's, yeah, so she's feeling great now. Just feeling lots of pressure. They checked her, she was only five centimeters, so not quite as far as maybe she thought, but. On OB, there's definitely dedicated teaching time by the attendings, usually sometime around 2.30 or 3 o'clock, and the attendings will take us, you know, outside, downstairs, and um, 
basically give us a, a talk on an issue regarding OB anesthesia, um, where they talk about you know, the recent papers, any of the literature that's come out, or just review a topic um, that they think is important for us to know. It's um, one of the few chances that we get to get dedicated one-on-one -on -one teaching uh, time with an attending. Usually there's teaching time that takes place in the OR, but um, that's kind of hard because you're worried about the patient and there's a lot of things that are going on all at once and it's hard to really focus all of your attention on what they're talking about. But here, you know, you're, you're outside of the clinical environment and it's just one-on-one -on -one teaching and it's, it's great. On a non-call day, you come in at around 7, uh, you take care of what's going on until about 2.30 or 3, then you get that dedicated teaching time from about 3 to 4. After the teaching time, you're free to go home. So you'll turn in your drug box at the pharmacy, and that's pretty much it. The call person takes over the responsibilities on the floor, and you go home and um, really don't have to worry about anything else. You go through such a long process to become a doctor, you know, the years of college and med school and now here in residency, I'm finally getting to do what I really want to do. Even in med school, you do a lot of ancillary things that don't specifically apply to the training that you're eventually going to do day to day. So it's, it's great. I'm, I'm really, I'm loving where I'm at right now. Thank you.